changes will happen as a result of your meditation practices. Once I went to my master because abruptly all my practices left me. I was very awake. In 1945, I was working in Madras and doing my daily practices, which started at 2.30 a.m. and went until 9.30 a.m. Then I went to the office. One day the practices all left me abruptly. I simply did not wake up to attend to them. In my neighborhood was a Ramakrishna mission and the Swami called it the dark night of the soul. He said, you come to me and listen to my discourse every evening at six o'clock. Someone at the Vishnu sect, a Swami said, you have to continue come to attend our kurta. Our guru says, even if the vessel is clean, you have to wash it for the next day. I told him, but if my cup is gold, I need not wash. Maybe your cup is brass. So everyone was telling me to continue practicing, you see. But I wasn't satisfied. Because my experience was that the practices left by themselves. I loved them, but I was puzzled because I could not do them. I could not sit. So I went to my master, Ramana Maharshi, to solve this problem. I said, I have been practicing for 18 years, always meditating. But I have woken up and didn't want to sit. I'm confused about what to do. Sri Ramana then asked me, How did you come from Madras to Tiruvannamalai? I answered, By train. And from the railway station to the ashram? By horse cart. Where are these vehicles? he asked. I said I had left them at their stations. He said, the means brought you to a place and you rejected the means. They left you. Means will bring you, introduce you and turn back. You can't keep sitting on the train when the ride is over. The work of the practice has taken you to your destination. Now, get out at the station. The work of the practice is over now and you have to face yourself. A very pleasing situation. You too will be happy to give up the means. We are so attached to the means and in love with the means 
and enjoyments that we forget the purpose to go somewhere you need the means but what means are needed when you are not to move when you are already at home you do not need any mode of transportation A real teacher will not give you anything to do. No method. Nor can they give you freedom. They simply remove the concept of bondage. You can do it yourself. If you can't, go to a good teacher. That is the teaching of a true teacher. Although the means get you somewhere, they have to be rejected. This is because when you really arrive, you see that the means are totally useless. And your arrival was not the result of any means. When I saw the position after these means were rejected, I found these means had nothing to do with the situation. Once you have touched the philosopher's stone, you cannot turn back to iron or brass because you are pure gold. If means were involved, you could reverse it. We speak of means because otherwise no one understands. But once you truly experience, you will see that means are of no use. Nothing touches it. means mean mind the mind is not responsible for leading you to that which is beyond the mind mind will lead of course 
These means will lead you to something related to mind. But going beyond the mind has nothing to do with means. And means belong to the past. When you speak of means, it will take you to the past. To be as you are now, at this very instant. What means are needed? Emptiness is not heavy. If you experience it as heavy, it cannot be true emptiness. Who is thinking? Where does this I live that thinks? For you, I is also a thought. Trace it back to its source and discover from where it arises. The thought must stop. First, no object. No doing, no I. This is why I do not give you a practice. If you practice meditation for one hour or two hours, for a 10 day retreat or a one month retreat, then what about the rest of the year? It must be 60 seconds each minute. 60 minutes of each hour. Twenty four hours a day. That is true silence. That is true meditation. True meditation never stops. This is why there is nothing to do. No practice. Simply be who you already are. I am 
giving you nothing and taking away nothing. Only pointing to that which you already are. Don't leave here thinking, I think I experienced emptiness. First, remove the activity or doing, which is thinking and experiencing. Then, remove the eye. Then we can begin. Then there is room for interesting discussion. From this place, report your reality. Consciousness does not sleep. In the waking state, it is awake. In the sleeping state, it is awake. This awareness does not change. The states may change. And you are that awareness in waking state or sleeping state or dreaming state. There is no difference. A difference is created by the mind. And when in satsang, we do not speak our mind, only awareness. Don't worry about methods. If you are sincere and honest and have a true desire for freedom, even wrong methods will take you there. Therefore, give rise to the desire 100% and the rest will take care of itself. What you are doing is not important. The end is important. You can do anything you like. The end must be that I have to be free. 
you must be sincere, serious and honest. Then don't worry about the methods. This inside self is consciousness itself. If you do not know the correct method, it will lead you. Where you are arriving, it already knows who is coming and it will go out to receive you in the proper way for you. You must be honest and never mind proper method. When the idea of control comes, the mind resists. Don't control the mind. Let it go anywhere it likes. Let it run anywhere in this moment. And what happens? It relaxes. Why? There is no tension, no fighting. So this is the opposite method. Letting the mind go where it likes. All of meditation is to control the mind. And this is letting the mind go. What difference does it make? It is your earnestness, your desire, not the method. You are always in the source. How can you leave the source? This is a joke. The fish are crying. I am thirsty. You are crying like a fish. I am not the source. I am not myself. I am not I am. What a big joke. When you come here for freedom, it is a big joke. I myself enjoy this joke. You will return to where you came from.
This is the only thing that is important. Nothing else. Only this. In I am, there is no experience. You only have to give up the experiences that I am is not. I am so and so. This is the experience. I am to have an experience has become somebody. I am is existence. I am is awareness. Finish at the I am and tell me what experience you will get. And this I am contains all the cosmos. So there is nothing to attain or do. Just end at I am. And see what the experience is. I am is eternal. Here, death can't enter. It is here in waking. Deep sleep and dreaming. Nothing to lose or gain. To become something, to expect something, you have to do something. To remain I am, you don't have to do anything. It's fullness is emptiness. I am is the ocean. And the waves are the cosmos, the universe, all happenings. And you can enjoy 
This is called Leela's Sport. When you give rise to a thought and don't cling to it, what happens? It returns to emptiness and so is no thought. Only clinging creates unfulfilled desires. The thought, I want to be free, is not clinging, because freedom is not an object. Where does it spring from? It will merge there, and you are conscious of that. Therefore, it is called freedom. Effortless. No practice. Only see what is happening. It's enough that you have attention and you are aware all the time. Even when you say, I was not aware, you were aware that you were not aware. You have nothing to fear. So why don't you identify yourself as space itself? You are already that. If there is fear, it is like the wave rejecting the ocean and trying to run away from it, isn't it? With great speed, the wave rushes away from the ocean, from this great fear of the ocean. She abandons the ocean by thinking what she has to do What is all this running to the shore? It has to merge into its own substratum. 
into its own essence. It's only the separate name and form that have to go to be recognized as the ocean itself. So when the idea of space arises, identify yourself as that ocean, as space itself. When you know how to follow all thoughts and questions back to their source, they disappear. When you know this trick, you don't need to ask anything of anyone. You don't need to ask anything anywhere. So stay there. That is your permanent, eternal abode. Where nothing can touch you. And this home which I mention is your own self. It is eternity. Where there are no demands and no needs and no wants and therefore no desires. Desire is only in the mind if something is absent. You desire that thing and you run out of the house after it. But your true home is perfect complete by itself. No need is there, you see. It is complete fullness, full of everything. You are the Lord of the place. Don't become a beggar.
you say, I am not an enlightened person. Where did you get this thought? Did you not go to the past? Who is not enlightened? The past or the present? It is the past. Therefore, you made an effort to go to the past to get this concept of unenlightenment, of ignorance. So don't make any effort to go to the past and let us see what happens. Don't make any effort to go to the past or to conceive of a future. Who are you when there is no past or future? In that split moment, you are enlightened. Now, where will you go if you split this instant? Try to become ignorant. Out of this instant of light, go into darkness. It's not possible. So stay as you are. No effort is needed. You have to go somewhere to become something else. When you know it is stupid to become something, this is enlightenment. For this, you do not need any effort at all. When I use the word emptiness, it is the best word I can use for my experience. Nothing ever existed. You can call it empty. There is no other word available to my knowledge. During the time or experience of emptiness, I do not see anything. I am very happy.
but to express that happiness as I have been doing now for 70 years. Whenever I sit, I go back to that space that is beyond time. To express that moment, I use the word emptiness. But there is neither nothingness nor somethingness. Inside, I am very conscious, but I cannot describe that consciousness by any name. Therefore, I use the name emptiness. You could say empty of name and form, but it is even empty of emptiness itself, let alone name and form. This word I borrowed from somewhere. I can't describe it. I have no language to describe it. But to speak to you, I must use some word that you understand. And that word is emptiness. There is no concept of time, no light, no darkness. Only consciousness is there. And this consciousness cannot be grasped by any imagination. It is just vast emptiness. What we speak about, anybody can reasonably understand. But if it is understood with the mind, it becomes a trap. Understanding and not understanding are all in the scheme of ignorance just a realm of the mind. This is not learning. This emptiness, this reality, is your birthright. You cannot study to be what you already are.
you do not need to understand in order to breathe. You can only lose what you have gained. When you have an empty pocket, what can you lose? Then you need not have any fear. You can't lose emptiness. Nobody can pick an empty pocket. So empty your pocket. This is called freedom. Whatever is stored in your pocket, empty it. Then there is no fear. You can walk freely. The Sanskrit word for meditation, dhyana, means to empty the mind. When the mind is empty, when there is no concept in the mind, this is meditation. All empty mind with no thought whatsoever. When we meditate, we watch the function of the mind so that it doesn't cling to any object. When there are no thoughts left, the den is empty, and this emptiness is your nature. You will be very happy to settle down there. When you walk and talk now, you will function from this emptiness. But if you lose this, the ego arises from somewhere and then you become egocentric and don't recognize who you are. Just this thought, I am so-and-so or something is quite enough to fall back again into this.
everybody knows very well the direction that has been said and heard and known. I want to take you in the direction that has been unheard, unsmelled, unsaid, unthought. No mind has ever entered there. The mind retreats after facing the light. The shock, what you call fear, is this fear. Taking off is a fear. Once you take off, you can't return to the same runway. Where are you going to land? You can't abide. Don't cling. Even to the emptiness. You can never touch any port. because you left everything behind. What is unthought, unseen, unimaginable? This I call emptiness. Take off from the emptiness itself. Emptiness is a concept. Freedom is a concept. Enlightenment is a concept. They have brought you from other concepts such as I am suffering, I am bound. So you have to accept concepts of freedom and emptiness. But I advise you to take off from there, from freedom from enlightenment, from any concept of whatever it is. Nobody has seen tomorrow. This instant is the time. Don't postpone this instant for the next day. We are all returning to our source and it is not an individual question. All the beings of this planet 
are only you. This thought of freedom is consolidated, belonging to everybody. If one individual frees himself, all have been freed. How do you explain this? Supposing you sleep and during the dream there are many, many people who are aspiring to liberation. They are doing different exercises and practices. You are telling them what freedom is. You are speaking to everybody. Meanwhile, someone asks you how to attain freedom. They question you about it and instantly you wake up while speaking about freedom. When you wake up from this dream of others aspiring to freedom, What happens to those you left behind? When you woke up, you did not leave anyone behind or bound. This is only the imagination that we are bound. All are free. Who is not free? When people are bound, they are sleeping and they are all projected on you. In the dream, there are all those people aspiring to and working for freedom. When you wake up, where are the others? Who is journeying for freedom? The one who is already free. Just get rid of the concept, I am the body, separate from the source. You return to what you always were. This journey will take you back to your home. It will not push you to any new kind of dimension. You cannot become or get what you are not.
You have to be what you already are. When you wake up from the dream, nothing else existed. Where there is name and form, there is still dreaming. Where there is name and form, there is fraud, not reality. In the waking state, there is no difference between man and man, and birds and rocks. All a total being. When you aspire to freedom, the whole cosmos is with you. Keeping free of any thought is the best way to help the world. When the world is crying for peace.